<coughs> can we just end the season now? Can we just call full time on the season now? I'm done. I can't be bothered. Just, just, just stop. Just end. I can't be bothered. It's not been a colossal failure, but all of these players are on the beach, mate. They don't. They just don't care. They just don't care. Marco is probably, you know, speaking to a couple of people. Got a few agents over in Saudi or something like that. We got given a second chance at life in that game. A bloody second chance. And we squandered it. We squandered it, mate. <laughs> it is pathetic. It really is. You dominate a game so, so well, yet you don't have any in products whatsoever. First goal for Newcastle ruled out because Dan Byrne fouls Calvin Bassey. I think it's a bit contentious. I don't really know where I stand on it. I'm probably in the same uh, realm as Newcastle fans where it seemed a bit soft. The issue that I have with today, my friends, is Marco Silva. The subs did not work, Marco. I don't know what the game plan was, and I don't know what you were expecting to happen, really. You took off three of our most creative players. Andres Pereira, Tom Kearney, and Willian. Yes, Willian and Kearney are both in their 30s and might be a little bit leggy. We can't be too over-reliant on them. But you move Alex Uwobi into the middle, which he was doing absolutely fine on that right wing, mate. You bring on Sasha Lukic, who I can't count the amount of times that he gave away the ball or put the ball out for a throw-in. It was just all over the place. Bring on Harrison Reed for a bit of stability. Stability. If it means that we draw the game nil-nil, fair enough, it's a point. But you take three of our best playmakers off. Willian, I can understand because he's about 50 years old. Pereira and Kenny, I don't get it. Maybe Kenny just can't do 90 minutes anymore. And what makes me laugh so much is that all of these changes and all the tactical changes, Wilson comes on, plays down the left, even though everyone knows that Wilson's so much better from cutting in on the right-hand side. It's all because you have to put Adama Traore on the right-hand side because he's so one-dimensional. And that's not me saying that Adama Traore didn't have a bad game when he came on because, you know what, he was the only one of those subs that really breathed a bit of life into this Fulham team. Wilson, I just he's been unbelievable and I'm such a big fan of Wilson as well. The crazy thing is he's left-footed but you put him on the left-hand side, on his favoured left-hand side, and his favoured left foot, even though he's a right winger, and he can't cross a ball in for some reason. I don't get it. I don't get it. Another person that can just do one, Raul Jimenez. I will rent a car as soon as I... If the offer is there, if, if his agent wants to reach out to me, I will rent a car as soon as he gets in touch, the agent, that is. Go down to my local enterprise, uh, drive him to any airport that he wishes to go to. His hold at play is absolutely disastrous, mate. It's, it's seriously worrying. It's worrying how bad this bloke actually is. I know he's coming back from an injury, but he's been back for a while, for goodness sake. He comes on trying to cross a ball in in like the dying minutes, and he does another bloody Rabona again. This is circus stuff, mate. If you want to do that, go join the MLS. Go join a little circus league or something like that. And I'm not meaning to disrespect the MLS like that, mate, but they'd love it. You know, all-star weekend. We're going to see who can do the most keepy-uppies and rabonas because we like to do that. Just get gone. Get rid it's such a major missed opportunity. Referee, and I think Newcastle fans will agree with me that the ref was absolutely tin pot. Useless. It's just, I've run out of words, like, to describe this bloke. Sasha Lukic was on the field for probably no longer than three minutes. No longer. And my, my calculations are probably wrong because I actually haven't seen how uh, long he was on the pitch for when he picked up a yellow card. There were multiple fouls which Longstaff committed, and yet the referee was just so unfazed by it. So unfazed. And it's 
just so frustrating. It's so frustrating that you can dominate an entire game, yet come away with nothing to show for. So many missed chances, so many missed opportunities. From minute one to the half time, I was like, mate, we are in control. I was speaking to Cam Ramsey, Fulham Mish, who I do Fulham Mish with at half time, and I was like, we've got these, haven't we? We've got them. Easy. A bit more of that in the second half. Final ball be a bit better. End products be a bit better in front of goal. And we've got the beating of them. I thought we completely dominated that midfield. I really, I really do. I really, really do. I thought Joao Polinia, uh, Pereira, and also Tom Kenny were unbelievable. You look at the stats like throughout the game and the pure domination from Fulham. I looked at the stats 20 minutes in and Newcastle had had something like five passes in Fulham's half. That's absurd. That's absurd. We pinned them right back. And credit to Fabian Cher and Dan Byrne as well. I thought they were brilliant. I did. I, I thought they were insane. There were periods where Rodrigo Munez, it felt like he was being not just doubled up, but tripled up. Dubravka, insane game as well. You got the sense of Marco giving them the hairdryer after Forest because they deserved it. They deserved the hairdryer. And you thought it was going to fire a rocket straight up their ass, straight up their bum hole. And it worked for a period, but just switch it off, switching off. VAR saves your skin, and yet you still can't be bothered. Nah, great, wonderful. Ball drops to Bruno Gimarai, and he just, you know, has a free shot on goal. No one's closing him down soon enough. I don't know if it's Robinson or Lukic. Just watch the players on the edge of the box, for goodness sake. And that goes for every... We must have had, we must have had the full 11 inside of that box, mate. Monitor them, for goodness sake. Put your body on the line. This is like primary school football basics. We did have a few let-offs throughout the game as well. Anthony Gordon, two wonderful opportunities. Couldn't make something happen. I rate Anthony Gordon so much, but just wasn't his day, mate. Few chances. Yeah, we should have done better. There was a period, I think it was in the second half, ball got played across the face of the goal. And just a simple touch would have just put the ball in the back of the net. Didn't happen. Mooney is in the first half as well. Does so well holding the ball up on his left foot and just puts it straight at Dubravka. It's frustrating. And I know he was probably under pressure as well. And Newcastle was so deep and so hard to break down. How's a team with Matt Ritchie beating us? But I love Newcastle. I love the city. I love the people. I love the fans um, because they're the best in the world. And I'm not... I'm not Oh, people are going to say, oh, get out of Newcastle's arse. It's true. It's facts. I only spit facts on this YouTube channel, mate. It won't be Kearney, Willian, Castagna, Robinson and Palinia were top tier in that first half, mate. Palinia, yeah, standard, standard. Especially in that first half, special attention to Castagna and Robinson. Some of the last ditch defending and going forwards as well was perfect. Palinia pocketed Gimarai, in my opinion. But that midfield was just so exposed as soon as Marco made those changes. I, what is it? The 6th of April, the, the, the season's pretty much been done since we lost to Liverpool in the Carabao Cup semi-final second leg. That's just tr the truth. We're going to have a few weird games like Sheffield United away last weekend, which we drew 3 all. But for the most part, mate, it's just going to go out like a fart in the wind. I'm glad that we're not uh, in a relegation battle. I'm so grateful for that. But at the same time, it's like, God, we really could have... If you look at some of the missed opportunities and European spots up for grabs, there, there's quite a few major missed opportunities this season, mate. We've beaten Spurs. We've beaten Manchester United. We've beaten Arsenal, for God's sake. We've beaten Arsenal. We lose to Burnley at home 2-0. It just, it just doesn't make sense sometimes. It is a really quality team, but it just doesn't make sense. You're losing 3-1 uh, away from home to Nottingham Forest. It's baffling to me, mate. It's baffling. Right, I'm going to go and order um, a pizza and self-loathe because um, I don't deserve it. But this is just what my football club makes me do. Uh, that's about it. Let me know your thoughts.
in the comment section just down below me uh newcastle fans how what did you think of your team's performance should fulham have walked away with the win and fulham fans as well yeah just do whatever